So what did you unpack during this? Uh, what are your thoughts on CRA, first of all? Do you think you can do that? Or do you think you would start out as uh, maybe like a trial master file specialist or something like that? Um, I think I can do both. I mean, what I see is just about being able to... I think knowing where the files are, knowing where, okay, like some of the questions asked here, um, you know, like where the findings are, so I know, okay. Like in the rig binder, you mean? Mm, yeah, because mm -hmm. um, like the AE, if there was an AE that was needed ah, to let's start there, yeah. Okay, so AE, let's just... I know you're probably going to go for like a in-house CRA role first, or maybe a coordinator. Like when you go with Shantae, you're going to be more of a research assistant role, right? But let's pretend for a minute CRA, right? Like the most advanced we can get, okay? So AE, and then SAEs, of course, right? Where will you first encounter as a CRA the AE? Um, the uh, Visica's notes, most most likely, or it is which the, note? The uh, the Visica's note they mentioned here. Yeah. Progress note. Um, uh, where did I see it? Um, it's like a, a note stating what was done. No, not here. So it's one of the other ones here. Um, I think that was the only one I encountered. And there was this one that had um, on schedule visit, mm -hmm. but the person has an elevated, um, I don't know the term, an LFT. Okay. And I'm thinking, and but they did it, they run a lab work for the person or the subject, mm -hmm. and it was found to be normal, but it's with, you know, some of the, under my understanding, they should have there should be a law for that. Okay, it, so this breaks it down, okay? So again, there's several places it's gonna be listed. Okay, you're right, there is supposed to be an adverse event log for every subject binder, okay? Mm -hmm. Adverse event log. There is, there's supposed to be every subject source binder should have an adverse event log as well as a conmed log and then a protocol deviation log, okay? But, but, and this is why CRAs make the money they make, okay? Is the site gonna put every AE on the log? Just forget about what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to. Mm -hmm. But how do you know they have? And a log for AE. It, yeah, let's say what subject is that? Number eight? Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. How do you know if all the AEs have been have been documented for subject twelve? Hmm. You would expect it to be on the adverse event log. Yeah. But I'm expected to be at work on time every day. How do you know if I'm not? If it's not recorded at then I don't know. How do you know? This is why CRAs make the money they make. You've got to read between the lines. Mm -hmm. You've got to read every single progress note for that visit. You've got to look for signs. The PI might see the patient. Like today we had a sub eye seeing patients. Or sorry, yesterday we had a sub eye seeing patients. He's going to write his progress notes. Maybe he puts subject had a headache. What if we're busy and he doesn't tell the coordinator Hey, here's my, he's, he's just going to say, here's my note, you could file it. How do I know the coordinator reads that note? And then the subject's not going to tell the coordinator they have a headache because they already told the doctor. doctor which is unfair. So <laughs> what does that leave us with? Either the coordinator is very thorough, or, most likely the case, the CRA has to find these things. And it could be anything. And by the way, it could be an AE that the site missed. Mm -hmm. Like it could have been a lab result that the PI didn't put NCS. 
right? But it is CS, not in clinically significant or clinically significant. Because if it's NCS, okay, it's not AE. But if it's clinically significant, it's AE. Could it be SAE? So how do you know? You can't just assume that just because there's a log that people yeah, are yeah. filling it out properly. There's, you have no way of knowing unless you get into the details of each visit. And you also know what you're looking for. This is why everyone wants to do oncology CRA, but why it's the hardest one to get into. Because it's like a different language. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you won't know unless you have experience with that, what is an AE and what's not an AE. Mm -hmm. Right? What's part of the cancer and what's actually an AE? You won't know unless you have that experience. But for, let's say, constipation, right? This is a constipation study. Yeah. AE could be anything outside of constipation, right? And you, you won't know just based on the log. If, if all you do is say, oh, the AE log is blank, the site is fine, there's no AEs, so the EDC won't have any AEs either. But if you look, if an auditor looks through all the notes and finds adverse events, it shows you're not doing your job. Also shows the site's not doing their job, but they're relying on the CRA the sponsor is relying on the CRA to beat that enforcer, right? So you can't just go by logs. So that's why this is a great topic to start with, because it's like, and, and you brought it up randomly, but it could be anything. Yeah, because I saw it in two places where I found it, and there wasn't, there wasn't anything reported. Now, the other question is, when is log? Is there need to be a report on that that is stated that okay there was a log but this is what was done and this is what the outcome was for a, uh, an AE for an AE so yeah. not an SAE not an SAE that was the one I found okay so we're just talking about an AE let's like you're saying let's say that they did put the AE on the log yeah like let's say they put headache yeah and let's say they put um, and then they put the date that it started, the date it stopped, or if it's ongoing, diarrhea, and nausea. Okay, that's the three AEs so far for the subject, and they are on the log. And if you've done the work and you've seen that that is all the AEs that have happened that you've seen, so there's no other reports really. It's just did they resolve? Is it still ongoing? Did they take any medications because of it that need to be added to the condiment, right? Okay. So that's a good one. And this opens up a can of worms. Okay. Let's say they got a headache, right? They took Tylenol. Now, when they took the Tylenol, was it between before they visited or after they visited and it was... No, subject was at home and had a headache, took a Tylenol, and he's been having headaches for like a week, and he came back to the clinic, not because of the headache, he came to the clinic for his visit, okay. and it just, it, it came out during conversation with the doctor that he actually had a headache. Okay. So, it opens up a can of worms because, okay, now he took Tylenol. Well, what else did you take? Okay, only Tylenol? Okay. What's the dose? When did you take it? When did you stop? When did you start? How many? Same dose every day? Different dose. Now, that's a simple one. That's Tylenol. Usually it's not exclusionary. What if they took something for nausea and the class of drug that it is is actually not allowed in the study? Prohibited med. But the patient didn't know that. They're not going to know. And let's say the PI forgets that part, because it's sometimes it's just like a little table of prohibited meds. Mm -hmm. So it's usually in the. Uh, it's in the protocol. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's in the oh. protocol. What's prohibited? Okay. But again, if the coordinator and PI are busy, they're not reading that. They forgot. Maybe they were trained once, but they forgot because there's a hundred meds that are prohibited. This person took one. They don't even know it. Now the CRA doesn't catch it, and the patient dies, or gets very sick, 
Yeah, it's become a, beyond just paperwork and inconvenience for you. It's like something that you have to live with as a CRA. You miss this and, you know? So it gets very, it could get very complicated. Usually, that's not the case. But as, as a CRA, when I see an AE, obviously I make sure it's on the log and I'll report it properly on the EDC. But what I'm really looking at is, did they take any medications? Okay. If it's no, good. If it's yes, okay. is that a restricted med? Okay. okay. Um, also, another thing I'm looking at if I'm a CRA is, is it an AE? Has it been reported as an AE, but it's really supposed to be an SAE? Or not? Or is it an AE of particular interest to the sponsor? There are some studies where the AE is of particular interest to the sponsor, so they need to be reported slightly differently than a regular AE. Hmm. But as long as it's just the AE, it just needs to go on the log, needs to go on the EDC, and that's it. Okay. Okay. If it's a SAE, but you're but you're also looking at the medication, okay? Okay. and also the end date, or is it ongoing? Okay. And if it doesn't end, and it's a long study, you can make the argument that that should now be part of their medical history, like a new new medical history that happened. No, it's not just the AE, right? Okay. What if I get cancer while I'm in an asthma study? Obviously, that's a SAE if it requires hospitalization, right? But now it's part of my medical history as well. Okay. So how would that be reported? Those two, like. Now, the AE is put in the EDC system. Um, yep. Put it, it's, so it's in this log, which is in the source, and then it goes in the EDC. So, like, what, in the summary, what would you say in the EDC? In the EDC, it's just a, um, it's a section. It says AE, and you ju it's just, you type it. It's exactly what the log shows. Okay, just type whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Date started. Or medications given or taken, ongoing or stopped, and then sometimes they put like severity, um, but usually not. Now SAE, totally different. Okay, that's the one. Okay, there's an initial report that the site has to submit to the sponsor and to the IRB. So the initial report. And then there's the follow-up report that they need to send to the sponsor and to the IRB. No, Usually don't. involves hospital records. Okay. Uh, so the initial, you may not have the hospital records yet, but you know what happened. The site is within 24 hours of being notified or being aware of the SAE, needs to send the initial SAE report to the sponsor and the IRB. Now with the SAE report, it doesn't usually work of course, like an electronic format, like type up and email to... Uh, it's an actual report that they will generate, the site. It has a template already. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then they either email it, submit it electronically, or sometimes fax it to the okay. sponsor. Right? Okay. Now, yeah, So the, and then the follow-up. As soon as you get more information about it, like the hospital release records or um, more information about the SAE, like either it's resolved or you have records, mm -hmm. you send the site sends the follow-up report. And the site will be the one to send the follow-up report. Yeah. What about the initial site? Site. Okay. Who else would do it? Okay. Just have to. Okay. I mean, who else would know? It's like nobody else is going to know, mm -hmm. except the site. Sierra is not going to know. You don't deal with the patients. So what if okay, the site doesn't send it because it didn't send it on time without 24-hour window, and the CRA comes along and found that there was an ASA mm -hmm. that last week that wasn't reported? That would be a GCP violation. Okay. And a deviation, I believe, as well. Okay. It's bad. Bad. And then you have to... That's a good question, though. Okay? Let's say you... Perfect. Perfect scenario. You're a CRA. 
you go to your regular visit and you're reading through the books because you're doing a good job. You notice, hey, this is actually an SAE, but it was never reported. Uh-oh. You know, this was like two weeks ago. Well, obviously you're going to put it in your report. In your report, not the SAE report, your monitoring report. You're probably going to contact your team lead, project manager about it, what, what they should do. Um, but you should make sure that that report gets sent during your visit. Okay. Right? Even if it has been two weeks prior. prior. Yeah. Okay. But first you got to determine whether it actually is a SAE or if you just think it's a SAE. Because you're not the PI. So you've got to talk to the PI. The PI can tell you two things. Uh, don't worry about it. That's not a SAE. Okay? That's the first thing they may tell you. The second thing may be, oh, you're right. You know, we just forgot. That's the mm -hmm. second thing. Okay? If the first thing, they're saying it's not a SAE. But you don't just take their word for it. Mm -hmm. If you really think it's a SAE, you talk to your medical monitor about that and put them in touch. They will determine if that's a SAE or not. Okay. So if, that, if it is, you make sure they send that initial report while you're there. Like that becomes priority number one. And then obviously a follow-up report where, you know, where is this patient? Are they still taking the study medication? Did they receive all the doses? Are they still compliant? What were the details of the SAE? Did they have to miss any doses? Did they miss any visits? Because it could open up more deviations that way when you look into it more. Mm -hmm. But let's say they didn't miss any dose and the SAE resolved on the same day. So they didn't miss any dose, but it just it wasn't reported. Okay. Another thing you can do after you make sure they send their initial SAE report is you look into the site SOPs. Right? So you can ask the site, what is your SOP? I want to see your SOP for reporting SAEs. Every site's going to have this. Now, does, in regards to the SO, SOPs, does the sponsor provide that or they No, no, the sites make their own SOPs. That's a standard operating procedure for a site. And My site here has SOPs. They're going to be very different than UCLA. Okay. It's based on what can we do, what are our procedures. Okay. The sponsors can't do this. And, the, and there's liability around that. Okay. They can't force you to use an SOP that you can't follow. Okay. Right? So sites are responsible for making their own SOPs, but in every SOP, there's a reporting SAEs section. Okay. So you're going to go through that as the CRA and read it, and it's probably going to say, within 24 hours of notifying, spon uh, site sends initial report to sponsor. Now, the site does not obviously did not follow their SOP. Right. Okay. So, what do you do in that case? Um, contact the team lead, my own team lead, yeah. that this has not been followed. Yeah. And what will be the next step? They should still report it. Of course they should still report it. But, but now, so let's say they already did, okay? But now you're being a detective. Well, what is the SOPs? Okay, I read it. They're obviously not following their SOPs. This is a problem, because what if they're not following something else in the SOPs mm -hmm. that you haven't discovered yet, or something that may happen in the future, right? So again, this is very important in research, training, yeah. it's going to be your action item, okay? Mm -hmm. PI to retrain staff on site SOPs. You, as a CRA, can even fill out the training log the day you're there on the proper GCP practices for reporting SAEs. You can do that. CRA can write on a training log. Usually you're not allowed to write on any logs as a CRA except the visit log that you sign in that you're there and then the training log. You can do training. 
Okay. Every other log, every other piece of paper at the site, CRAs cannot write on it. Sometimes they could initial things like for investigation of product, but for the most part, it's all the sites. But with the exception of this training log. So if that's an interview question, you can take them down this whole pathway and it demonstrates your knowledge of the deeper issues, okay, which is the SOPs, which, okay, this already happened. Nothing we can do. But how do we prevent future things from happening? Retrain on the SOP, retrain on the particular issue, and there's also something you can request that the site do, a CAPA plan. Corrective action, preventative action. You can request the site do this prior to your next visit. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's corrective action, preventative action. What's the issue? Oh, say that again, please. Uh, corrective action. Okay. And then preventative action. C A P A. Identify the issue. In this case, it's site failed to report SAE. And again, the site has to do all this. What's the corrective action? Well, the site will send the initial and the follow up and, and document it properly. We're going to document the deviation, training. We're going to retrain all of our staff. That's the corrective action. Retrain mm -hmm. all of our staff on how to do this properly. What's the preventative action? What are you going to change now going forward to make sure this doesn't happen? Oh, we're going to add an extra person that all they're in charge of is looking for SAEs in the books. We're going to hire someone else or so another coordinator from another study is going to be this QA person making sure that we're not missing any SAEs. How are they going to do that? They have to fill out a log every day that the patients that came in that day did not actually have any AEs or SAEs. Or if they did, that they reported. That's an appropriate preventative action. And again, has to be documented. So just because they say they're going to do that, just because they say they're going to now have another staff member that, whose only job is to make sure there's no AEs or SAEs that have not been reported, they actually have to do it. And that's the CRA is going to make sure that that's actually being done. So your next visit, you're going to say, are you following the CAPA plan? Who is this person? Have they been trained? Are they on the delegation log? Mm -hmm. And wh where is their documentation that they're doing this? How do I see this? I, I hope to see something in the source. And if they just tell you, no, no, they're just doing it, but not if there's no SAE or AE, they're not writing anything. Well, that's not okay in research. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's okay if you didn't make that mistake to begin with, mm -hmm. but now that you said you're going to do a capital plan and you're going to do that, now it needs to get ahead. It needs to be documented that you're doing that. And even if they don't have that, we'll think that they have, okay, subject this, doesn't have not applicable, something like that, maybe right. updated. Right. Stuff like it that. could even be a simple check. Yeah. No AE. You can have a, a paper, piece of paper that says AE, SAE checkpoint. Date, subject number, yes or no. That's it. Okay. Right? It could be something as simple as that. But if they're saying they're going to do something like that and they don't do it, then there's no point in doing this kappa because the, obviously they're not following it. So the, when you get problem sites like that that repeatedly don't follow their own process, usually those sites get put on a screening hold. Okay. Okay, but that's not for the CRA to make that decision, but it's going to be strongly influenced by your report that you're writing. And you can put your recommendation. CRA recommends kappa plan. CRA also recommends um, site to be put on a screening hold until they're retrained on their new systems, sponsored to sponsored to advise. That way you're documenting as a CRA 
that you're aware of what's going on, and you're even giving your opinions on what the the sponsor should do in this case, because they're relying on you. They don't go to the site, right? Right? Your boss that doesn't go to the site, unless there's unless it's really a bad site, or they're doing like a pre audit visit or something, or they're going to shadow you to make sure you're monitoring properly. Mm. Otherwise, it's just you going to the site every time. Mm. So they're relying on you. You're like the eyes and ears for the sponsor. And if you let that slide and don't put in your report, it could reflect poorly on you mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah, so you got to be careful. This looks something simple like a headache can turn into like a, Big you know, a death. And the SA, that's extreme. But and the SAE unreported can lead to a capital plan and a screening hole. Okay. Quick it's, question. It just gets very deep. Now, when you want to ask them to pre present the SOPs, their side SOPs, and they're not following it, and we it was reviewed and trained on, would uh, the um, they sponsor be involved to know that okay they've been if so, there has to be an update on their SOPs. Yeah. So the site is allowed to update their SOP. Maybe maybe the argument is a fair one. Um, you know our initial SOP was so stringent we can't follow it, so we're modifying it. Okay, that's fine, and they can they're allowed to do that. Um, the CRA cannot train a site on their own SOPs. Okay. Because you're not trained on their SOPs. You can train them on the protocol, and you can train them on aspects of good clinical practice. But you can't train them on a specific SOP that is just specific to that site. Okay. So the site can modify their SOPs any time, but that doesn't that doesn't negate the need for a capital plan in a case like that. But in a situation when, where they update it, who do they notify? Do they have to notify the CRO? Um, sponsor will... So if the site's been put on a screening hold and it, it's contingent upon them retraining and maybe updating or revising their SOP okay. and doing a capital plan, the sponsor has to approve the CAPA plan. So that CAPA plan, the sponsor has to approve it. Okay. Great. Site can't just write whatever they want. This is still fresh, can't write on it. But a site, site can't just put whatever they want and then the sponsor is okay with it. The sponsor has to approve the CAPA plan. Okay. Um, the SOP can be revised the sponsor would have to approve it for that particular study. Thank you. Okay, that's what I want to consider. Should they like? It, should they come up like? Oh, you know what? We want to uh, revise our SOPs and give us. So who makes the the move? The site makes the move to the sponsor. Huh? The so site notifies the sponsor, or the CRA notifies, you know, the sponsor that they want to revise their SOPs because it's not working. Um, the CRA cannot recommend the site, well, the CRA can recommend the site revise their SOP, but it's the site's responsibility to ensure that their SOPs are something they can follow. Okay. But it has to, like you said, it has to be approved and sent to the sponsor that this is what they have currently. Right. Okay. If you're on a screening hold, yeah. Okay. But if you're not, if you're not in any trouble, like my site right now. Okay, we're doing like seven studies. We haven't had any issues like that required cap up plan or anything. I can revise my SOP right now. But would you I don't need approval from anybody. Okay. So you're just gonna be with for the staff? Right. Now I have to document that I've retrained all my staff on the new SOP. Okay. All That's right. it. And inform the CRA that this is You don't even have to. Okay. You don't have to. It's just going to be the, the SOP is not something that anyone looks at until there's a problem. Oh, okay. It's not like you're going to look at their SOP every time you visit. You're never going to look at their SOP unless there's a problem. And the purpose of looking at their SOP is to see if they're not following their own SOP. 
But yeah, that's a good question. Very good. You ready to do this um, PSSB? Yeah, you have to get, get me in, uh, into the... Because a lot of the question, question mood, I have the... Uh, it's just the questions, but, you know, what am I... Am I'll I show you. Okay. I'll show you. But before that, do you have any other questions on the interim monitoring? Okay. Um, what was it? I saw... And then once you do your SSV, your site selection visit report, we could review that as well. We'll do another video, but we'll do that in my office. Okay. That was good stuff about the AEs. That was actually mm -hmm. very good. No student has asked that before, but from the angle that you asked it, it was very intelligent. Thank you. Never been asked that before. But I'm glad you did because it opened up a can of worms, which are great interview questions.